Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a me strength with your own two hands. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a Let me tell you about it now Lead me, Lord From temptation Purify me with Fill my heart, Lord With your Holy Spirit Only you can take So we have appreciate everybody donating that. You know, we should have a good turnout, prayerfully. And uh, again, the poster out there is wrong. It is not 2.15 where it was. It is um, one of the posters wrong, but it is at 6 p.m. next Sunday. Okay, the next women's meeting, February 11th at 2 p.m. There should be a food sign-up sheet event to be out there. Speak with Carmela Wilson and Kathy Moore for that uh, and, and information. But it will be on February 11th on Saturday at 2 p.m. And uh, which will be following the breakfast. And then starting again Sunday 5th, our service will be uh, at 1045 in the morning. And the evening will not be, we'll have no problems. You know, the evening will stay as it is. So, and that's about all the announcements I have. Um, I think there's always something I forget and I can't remember. Something I wanted to say. But anyway, if it comes up, it'll come up later. All right, we're going to go to the reading of our word, and it is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 19 through 22. And again, this does go along with the message of tonight, which is signed, sealed, delivered. And this is the word of the Lord. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who established us will you in Christ, now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. 2 Corinthians 1, 19-22. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for bringing us here tonight, for gathering us together, for the priority of worshiping and praising you and to thanking you for the wonderful gift that we have, the gift of salvation given to us by your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Father, help us to understand. Help us to gain your wisdom. Help us to, in these last days, 
and to see the importance of getting the good news out there, to evangelize, to tell others the truth. And just fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and let the Holy Spirit lead this service tonight, convicting us of sin, righteousness, and judgment, but also counseling us and comforting us with your love. We need your love, Lord, so we're desperate for you. And we thank you, and we ask all this in the precious name of Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen.
have I ever done to deserve even one of the pleasures I've known? And tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth loving you? sense about this. Um, we're going to be in the uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 3 through 14. And, and this scripture really popped out in the last couple of months as I've been witnessing to a lot of the Roman Catholics online or the YouTube and internet and blogs and everywhere else and other people. There's this verse in here that really just popped out and it's really important. And uh, as we've seen also in 2 Corinthians 1, 19, 22 about uh, who God who also sealed us and given us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of our hearts to guarantee. And Apostle of Paul also wrote that similarly in this Ephesians letter to the Ephesus. And it's an important scripture because religion of man has no answer for this <coughs> scripture that we're going to look at today in here. They don't have an answer because to the religion that says we work and earn it, the scripture, you have to throw it out. You can't do that. So this is important that you understand the scripture and you memorize this 
not necessarily memorize all through, but remember where this is in Ephesians chapter 1, because this scripture is important. So, and of course, all scripture is, but let's read this as we go into the text. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. This is the word of the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters, of course, by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, not our will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which He has made us accepted in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound to us in all wisdom and prudence, having made to us known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in Him. In Him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined, again, according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be of the, to the praise of His glory. In Him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, reveal your Holy Spirit to us and awaken our hearts and our minds and transform us by the renewing of our minds, by the power of your word, through the Holy Spirit of promise, the sealing of the power of the gospel. Let it enthrone in us and shine us and enlighten us with your power, with wisdom and truth on this beautiful day, Lord God, that you have made. Father, all glory and honor is yours, Father God, and help us to see through the darkness and the muck of this world, see beyond the physical realm into the spiritual kingdom of God, and let us be opened our eyes to the truth. And let me speak as an oracle of God, and we ask in the precious name of Christ, who is Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. And signed, sealed, and delivered. Among all the great passages of Scripture, this is one of the greatest. It's important. It's never be overstated. Over, overstated. It deals with God's plan for the world. His eternal plan. It deals with the great blessings of God which He pours out upon those who trust in His Son, Christ, as their Savior. There are seven blessings. I'm sorry about There's actually, uh, yeah, eight blessings that are shown in here. Uh, first of all, I'm just going through, but God's blessing are heavenly blessings, not material. Verse 3. God has chosen us to be holy and blameless, verse 4, adopted as children. God has redeemed us, uh, given us wisdom and understanding, revealed the mystery of all His will to us, given us inheritance that has made us the heritage of God, and 8, God has sealed us with the Holy Spirit. What I want to first talk about, and that's important about this, about being sealed, signed, sealed, and delivered, right? Jesus who came down from heaven in the power of the Holy Spirit, the anointed, to preach the gospel, to bring the word of His Father, and to honor His will at all times. He is the blessed God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before His love. He chose us, predestined us into His glory. Who could fathom such a destiny, or such a predestination of the elect of, of God and how He chooses us? This blows me away. It blows my mind that He would know that on, in March of the year 2000 that me, a wretched sinner like me and many of us are, according to the Word of God, that He would have chosen me before the beginning of time, predestined us to the Word of Truth, coming to that saving grace that only He can give. And all through this, you notice that it was His will, His good pleasure, His blood, hid Him, through Him, 
In him you trusted. In him. It was all about him. Amen. How many times does Apostle Paul have to reiterate in the Ephesus to the Ephesians there, as well as we must reiterate those same words to all of the people around us saying that it's in him. It's through him. Not through us. Not through religion. Not through man-made doctrines of men. Not through our words. But by the grace of God. Amen. The truth will set you free. This is not something we should take lightheartedly, but it should put a burden upon our heart that knowing that sin has corrupted us, completely defiled us in the presence, in the eyes of God, we can't even be in His presence. But through the Holy Spirit of redeeming grace, we are blessed by the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amazing. Talking about this, about this signed, sealed, and delivered and sealing. And one of the things that, as we've seen in this one scripture about uh, where it talks about you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, those religions that say it's faith plus works, faith plus sacraments, faith plus this, that scripture contradicts that, doesn't it? It says you're sealed by the Holy Spirit through what? We have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness is according to the riches of His grace. Right? In Him, you all you have to do is trust. After what? We're going to go through these. You know? so, so it's nothing that we do. This complements Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For we are saved by grace through faith. But then certain denominations say, well, it doesn't say anywhere faith alone, does it? Well, of course, the Trinity's not in the Bible either. But the Trinity's still in there. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God in three persons. Just because it doesn't say faith alone, but also the scripture says, saved by grace through faith, the justification by faith, by believing, by trusting. Either it's by faith, or it's not by faith. Either it's God's grace, or it's not grace. We do not earn such a tremendous gift in the eyes of God. It's hard to get through the people, but the Word has to do it. The Holy Spirit has to add and predestine, as it talks about here. It's not about us. Talk about sealing and, and some of the things about the flesh. If we look at in Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 16, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, but to live according to, live according to the flesh. No, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Holy Spirit you put the death and deeds of the body, you will live. For as many are led by the Holy Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cried, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself is witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Apostle Paul was writing to the saints, writing to the Christian church in Rome. And that's what he's trying to Tell them that we are live according not to the flesh, but according to the spirit. If the flesh is dying, you are born again, you are grafted in, you've been adopted. <coughs> Nothing can snatch you out of his hands. That's the power of God. In Romans and further down in that same chapter, Romans 8, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are all killed all day long. We are counted as sheep of the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 35 through 39. So here, the word complements it. Scripture reveals scripture. I always use this when I witness. You just can't take one scripture, take it out of context. Well, James 2, and it says, talk about faith without works of death. You see, you've got to earn it. But then it throws out all these scriptures. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Romans chapter 4, Romans 3, 23, Romans 3, 24, Romans 8, 12, Romans 8, 35, Ephesians 1, verses you know, 13 and 14, all that scripture there. They're going to throw them all out just to say, you've got to earn it. Why? I don't know why. Why would man do that? Well, because man is, without the Spirit of God, is spiritually discerned, does not know. 
And that's why the Holy Spirit has to predestine, has to choose you, has to draw you to Him. And that's when the Holy Spirit draws you. And then the Word of God, through His grace, reveals the truth. And guess what? You're going to make a decision. That's what's going to happen. First point is we are blessed and predestined into the kingdom of God. Again, He chose us him, in Him before the foundation of the world. Again, that blows me away. Adopted. Back in verse 6 and 7. Well, how did He choose us? Well, He predestined us. He predestined us. He predestined there. In verses 6 through 7. How? By bestowing favor upon us, otherwise known as grace. This is how we became accepted in God's eyes to enter His kingdom of eternal life. There is no other way to enter. It's only through Christ, through Christ alone, giving us that gift. And what a price we pay is beyond human imagination. And we go to verse 9 there. This is always a mystery. And the mystery there means divine secret. Not disclosed to all who are called by the Spirit of God to understand the truth. Predestined for glory as adopted children of God. Always arranged by God Himself. Prearranged. You come into grace, you come into salvation, you come into church, all predestined by the God who sent His Holy Spirit to draw upon men to Himself. That's total depravity, that we're depraved in our own mind, in our own things, the way we can choose. God predestined us, and thus we, if we trust in Him and walk in faith, not by sight, then we are children of God. He doesn't want us to perish, but He's given us still the free will to come to Jesus Christ, but yet... In the meantime, God, before you did come to Jesus Christ, He knew you would come to Christ. That's what I love about the Lord. He knows past, present, future, a thousand days is like a thousand years, like a day, days like a thousand years. And this is wonderful how the Word speaks and God knows everything. We can't fathom what tomorrow brings. God already knows what's going to happen tomorrow. That blows me away. But I can't trust in, in myself. I can't trust what happened tomorrow. I can live for today because I could die in my sleep tonight. I don't know that. No one knows. That's why we got to trust in Him. Verse 10, the word dispensation here does not mean a period of time. It is easier to define the fact that God has a plan to gather together all those separated because of original sin, because of the fall of Adam and Eve. So here we are. It said dispensation meaning that to gather those who are separated. Then we go to verse 11. In Christ, we are predestined. Inheritance all achieved by His will. God's will not ours. Predestined by first trusting in Christ. Well, how does this trust develop? Well, we look at verse 13. It says, after you heard the word of truth. In him you have trusted, first of all. And secondly, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And then finally, up next, having believed. See, we're, we play a part of that, don't we? We're predestined, but... But God's saying, you know, we have that free will. We have to make a choice to trust because you heard the word of truth. What? The gospel. So if the church is not preaching this gospel, then you're not going to hear it. Then how can you trust in the Lord? And how can you make a choice by the Holy Spirit working through His word, the word of God, to enable you to receive eternal life? There it is. But because you do and have trusted, past tense, you heard, not hear, heard the word of truth as he's writing this apostle Paul, the gospel, and having believed, past tense again, you were sealed. That's past tense. Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Well, but pastor, the Roman Catholic Church, and the religious say that you still got to work it. You've got to do sacraments. You've got to play roles with these. You've got to pray somebody in purgatory. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Oh, my. But, but doesn't it just say that once you trust and believe in Him, you were sealed? Well, sealed. Jesus. I can't trump by Him. I can't what the Holy Spirit did. Jesus did it all for me, for you and I. Okay. He did it. Why should I argue with that? Why should I try to put my filthy, disgusting flesh into the formula? My self-righteousness, my works, my merits, it's garbage. It's all garbage. Religion of man is garbage because it fails to hit the mark. But God, 
Think about it. If, if religion could do it, if we could do it on our own, God would have sent Jesus. Think about that. Could have had the high priest still giving all blood offering. We'd have to have a big basin here. We'd have to have blood everywhere, blood splattered all over the place. It'd be pretty grotesque if you ask me. Thank God for his grace. I don't want to be slaying and cutting lamb's throats and chickens and guts and having blood everywhere. That's for the butcher. <laughs> Thank God for being signed, sealed, and delivered by the precious blood of the Lamb of God. For His grace and His love and His propitiation is sufficient for mankind. Period. And when it happened in the past tense, there it is. Sealed. It is a guarantee of our inheritance until we are redeemed through the purchase of the purchase possession. You are purchased, it's past tense again. Possession. You are possessed by God. He has your you are a possession. And Jesus says nothing can snatch you out of his hands. We read that in Romans earlier. You see that? Nothing. Nothing. Persuade, none death, nor name, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, depth, created thing. Nothing. I mean, that pretty much encompasses everything about this world. If you're truly born again. Which means trust. Which means believe. Which means you heard the word of truth. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news. That was a mystery, but has been revealed to those who are predestined into the kingdom of God. There will be some that will not be predestined. They will hear the message. But God knows that those people who decided not to believe, not to trust, not to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, they've walked away, they're predestined to hell. And God already knew that was the decision they would make. Even though we are not to know that, we are to go forth and preach the word anyway, in season out of season, to bring us, because we don't know who God is predestined and who will elect them, and who will be sealed, signed, and delivered. But it's our job because we're not the judge. He's the judge. We have no right to condemn anybody because those who don't believe are already condemned. But Jesus came into the world not to condemn but to save all mankind because he loves us. He said in himself, God is love. But he, in his love, gave us free will because we're, we, we're, we have that nature of sin. We, he's given us that nature of knowledge of good and evil, and we have to choose either good or evil. We can choose to be saved or not to be saved. We can choose to trust and believe or to distrust and disbelieve. One hand or the other. Which one will you choose? And this is the problem. So we have to hear, you have to believe, and you are guaranteed of the Holy Spirit. You know that word guaranteed of the Holy Spirit is, is, has made, it's, it's a down payment kind of our inheritance by the purchase of blood of Christ. Just for example, you, you went and buy a home or you buy a car or whatever it is a major purchase, you usually can put a down payment on it. Say, yes, I'm gonna secure this. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pay you the rest or I'm gonna go get the money and I'm gonna buy this because I want this. Well, God put a down payment on you, a guarantee. He's saying, yes, you're sealed. And at the appropriate time, I'm gonna come and redeem until the redemption that's gonna come Catching in the air, meeting the Lord in the air of the rapture. Or to take you home if you've died before that. You've been redeemed. You've been paid for. And he's put a deposit upon you. You have an inheritance that's guaranteed, that's uncorruptible. It's not rotting away, but it's held, preserved perfectly by God in heaven. You think he can't do it? Well, a lot of Gnostics and atheists believe he can't do it. Because they don't believe he's in God. They don't believe he exists. But yet the truth is all around us. The Romans... You know, one talks about the attributes of God are clearly seen for men without excuse. And of course, they are obviously destined to hell because they don't want to trust in the Lord. Unfortunately, they don't understand what they're getting themselves into. But for those who are the elect, those who are predestined, those who are hearing the gospel, they have a choice to make. And God already knows what choice you're going to make. And I pray that it's the right choice. And God predestined you. So when someone asks you, if you die tonight, do you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven? Are you certain? If you were truly born again, child, a believer of God, grafted and adopted, you can say yes, because in 
Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse um, 13, it says, You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Religion has no answer for that verse and that scripture. They don't. They say, No, 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 no. But, but you got to work, you got to pay dollars, you got you to do all the stuff. No, those things come after you have been born again. Because God supernaturally puts it in you by the Holy Spirit to lead you to use those hands. Use your voice. Use it to speak. To show love to others. It's the rivers of living water that Jesus promised He would give to us. The power of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, fire and power of Him enabling to go with boldness to make disciples and go to the ends of the earth of the gospel. And the end of your earth maybe down the street. But that's okay. God has a purpose for everybody. God needs His work to do the works. But again, works don't save us. Works follow the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. That's the difference. Because if we can do it ourselves and earn our salvation, then we can just throw the cross away. And you know many churches have taken out the cross. They don't want to hear about the cross because they think they can do it on their own. We don't need Jesus. Well, guess what? I just include almost every other religion except Christianity. Muslim, the Hindu, the Buddhist. Everyone else that don't believe in Jesus Christ, guess what? They're out there because they don't have the promise. They're not sealed by the Holy Spirit because when you quench the Spirit of God and you deny Jesus Christ, you are the Antichrist. 1 John 4 talks about that. You deny Jesus and God come into flesh, you are of anti or against the Christ. There's a lot of people that don't believe that. And sadly enough, their destination is not someplace nice. So today, trust me, don't trust me, trust the word. You are truly signed, sealed, and delivered. We will be delivered, but we have been delivered out of this world into the kingdom principles of our Lord. We must walk in spirit and in truth. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, led by the Holy Spirit, moved by the Holy Spirit, but it better line up with the Word of God because then you're going to be just like out the cult up there thinking of all crazy imagination, stupid, crazy ideas. We have to test everything by the Word of truth, by the Holy Spirit, and make sure it's of God. Every step must be a step that we truly consider before we make that step because we can't build on any other foundation. It's only the rock of Jesus. And that's the way our, our works will uphold upon the Word of God, upon the rock, Jesus Christ. You are signed, sealed, and delivered. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace. We thank you, Father, that you sent your Son, Jesus, to seal us through your Holy Spirit. The promise, the guarantee of our inheritance until the time we are redeemed by you purchased by the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, help us to trust in you and Christ alone, your Son. Help us as we hear the word of truth, the gospel, that we truly walk in faith and not by sight, and continue believing, knowing that our faith is not in vain, that we've been sealed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Help us to continue to walk of faith not by sight, but the walk of faith. Lord, help us in these last days. Could tomorrow not come? It may not. We don't know. But as for today, Father, convict those in this church tonight of the sin, righteousness, and of the judgment. And that have they truly trusted in the gospel? Have they truly heard the good news? Father, help all of us to understand the ramifications of walking away or not knowing the Lord. For he may not know us. Father, we thank you. Father, as we have this time of the altar call from the Lord, is anybody here but God in the center of hearts? We don't know Jesus is going to say, please, draw them to you from predestined them and seal them. There is of 10,000 